My name is Marina Mahade. I'm a writer and uh, sometimes human rights activist. <laughs> I was born in Alostar, Kedah, which is a little town up north. And um, my, my parents uh, were doctors. And uh, we lived there uh, almost all my childhood, all actually all, until I was about 17. And um, my parents uh, always instilled in us the, uh, many values, uh, including hard work and particularly in giving back to society. Uh, I always saw them volunteering uh, for various uh, organisations. My mother used to work uh, every Wednesday at the Family Planning Association, advising women on reproductive health, etc. My father used to had the anti-tuberculosis association. So I, I saw this and I guess you kind of absorb these things in, in your head. But I didn't really do much uh, for the longest time because, you know, as a teenager and then you're caught up with school and university, and then you start working and all that. But it was always, I think, in the back of my mind somewhere. And uh, when I came back to Malaysia uh, after studying in the UK uh, for five years, I came back here and I started working in a magazine. I was a journalist and, I, and by that time my father was deputy prime minister and I really had this big issue of, oh, you know, my father is a DPM and what am I? Because everyone only related to me in relation to him. Every time it's like, what is it like to be his daughter? What is it like to be... And it's really annoying and infuriating. And, and I figured that I really should have something for myself, you know. And I didn't know what. And to cut a long story short, uh, I spent a few years working and all that. And I, I guess I didn't realize I was collecting a lot of skills in organizing, in dealing with people, in fundraising and all that. And finally in 1993, I was invited to uh, head the Malaysian AIDS Foundation as chairman of the board of trustees, ostensibly to raise funds. And I accepted uh, the, the job, it's a volunteer job, and, and really that was the beginning of my journey to really become a, a full-time, almost full-time activist because I realized that raising money for, for HIV was not as easy as, as all the previous fundraising that I used to do, you know, for orphanages or for disabled and all that. It's relatively easy, but for HIV, it's a different thing altogether because people had so much prejudice. We were just a few years away from AIDS being called a gay-related disease and so people were affected by, by all this type of thing and the media really didn't help at all. Um, and in Malaysia, uh, the problem was mostly among drug users at the time and that's also a very stigmatized um, community etc. It's always viewed as a, a criminal problem, etc. So there's a lot to overcome. And I realized that really uh, educating people was key. And to do that, I had to educate myself. So that's basically what I set about to do. And, and I educated myself, not just from all the experts, the professors and the doctors and researchers, etc., but also uh, people who are directly affected the communities, you know, drug users, sex workers, transgender people, the gay community, refugees, migrant workers, etc. Those were my teachers and, and I realized that, you know, there's so much misunderstanding. It's a very simple problem in a way of a virus that just wants to go from one human being to another and that what we do is what facilitates it or not and that's it. I wish I could say uh, that we have moved along uh, a great deal. On some, some levels we have, um, we did change um, the attitude towards treatment for instance. Uh, we managed to get the government to agree to free HIV treatment for Malaysians living with HIV. 
uh, we got them to agree to um, what we call harm reduction measures, needle exchange programs, methadone programs. There's been some movement in the attitude towards uh, rehabilitation of drug users, from the more punitive to the more caring type. But overall, I think attitudes, I'm not sure, has changed very much. And in, in some cases, they have gotten worse. If you see um, the attitudes towards you know, sexual minorities, it's, it's actually gotten worse. And that doesn't help uh, at all. And also, I think people seem to have forgotten that we still have AIDS. I think that there are two things. The treatments, um, yes, they are now available and a lot of people around the world uh, live with HIV as a completely manageable disease because they have access to the treatment. The question is access. Uh, are the treatments available here? Are they, uh, are they uh, affordable to people? And the answer is no. Uh, the government was giving free treatment, but it's the first line treatment, uh, which means like the first thing you take when you are when you discover you have HIV. But eventually, you kind of have to move on. That's not free, and that's a problem. It was a long battle, but it it really made me grow. I think I was there for twelve years, and the me in the beginning and the me at the end was not the same. Malaysian women have been always been pretty advanced, you know. Uh, we are educated. The universities are 60-70% female. I think people have to realise, Malaysians have to realise that nothing stays constant. In many ways, I, I feel blessed that I was born here as a woman because of course I have opportunities that are not readily available to many women elsewhere. And I've, I've travelled.